out of the water and into the thunderous sea. These waters are raged on by this vicious war between this weary captain and his crew that's gone bonkers. So they're staging a revolution. Our golden boy here gets himself surrounded, but he's no quitter. He tries to fight off his own old crew, but sadly he's quickly taken out by this dude with a gun. Down to a watery grave he goes, and who's there to catch him? Why, it's none other than Godzilla. The Hardy crew freaks out, but what's weird is that this boy jumps after the giant lizard and he sees it retreating to a secret underwater cave. Little did everyone know that this event will change the oceans forever. Years pass, and this amazing town was built in the middle of the sea. In this floating town, you'll meet the hardiest crew to ever grace the seven seas. They're basically treasure hunters that are strongly built for raw deep sea diving. These aquatic studs go in one by one, then we get a good look at the beauty of the underwater. It's a place brimming with sea life, such as fish, turtles, and even sharks. Did I mention that there's also this sunken ship filled with treasure? But before this dude could get to it, a freak whirlpool hits him. It's cool though, as it only takes a sip of some oxygen from this portable container and he's back to work. The others have already hauled and netted their golden goodies, but this guy remains to be seen. His crewmates got him a bit worried. <laughs> but no worries, all part of becoming a man, our resident Aquaman swims to the ocean floor and finds some golden armor. Looks familiar, doesn't it? He touches the armor and holy smokes, did you see the size of that underwater blast? Looks like this dude's gonna be rich. But his riches will have to wait because bootleg Godzilla enters the scene. Our guy makes the swim of his life, and how in the heck did he get away from a giant underwater lizard like that? Long Ji makes the dive, while his other crewmates retreat to the boat. Conveniently, Long Ji finds Ha Chang, the egghead, who then comes back to his senses once Long Ji tries to wake him up. They're about to surface back to the boat, but that Chinese Chronosaurus makes a quick dash to sweep Heisheng away. The crewmates are arguing whether to leave or not, but then Long Ji and Ha Sheng surface. Although far apart, they signal each other. But oh boy, here comes that giant sea lizard to eat Long Ji. The ship crew panics and leaves Heisheng in the waters. Turns out, they didn't only fear the dollar store Godzilla, but also this big imperial warship. Heisheng gets thrown inside, where he begins to see some Shizo visions. Then this beautiful woman, I wonder if this is a hallucination too. Like some woman in the club, she asks about Heisheng's sweet Ouroboros tattoo. Then she takes a look at his chiseled muscles and face. Unfortunately for her, Heisheng is a certified sea incel and wants none of that. Well, he does struggle, but in the end, he doesn't have much of a choice, considering the woman has a hidden blade for a left hand. Suddenly, the woman finds a piece of the gold-plated armor on Heisheng, and now she gets serious. Heisheng claims that the armor piece was found in the seas, while the tattoo is a symbol of the pirates. The woman is intrigued with his origins, so they throw Heisheng in the storage room where there's another cute girl. He falls head over heels for her. Knocked out by the impact, Heisheng gets awakened by this girl's plea to work together and escape since the crew is planning to gay men both of them. Apparently she's a prisoner as well. Not to mention, she's also looking for the legendary underwater city. Heisheng gets another flashback and Long Ji is in it. He tells the legend of the underwater city residing at the sea's eye and the treasure there attracts all. The One Piece is truly real with this legend. Apparently, Heisheng is an orphan taken in by Long Ji. So basically, he just watched his father get devoured by a giant sea monster. They share a laugh but snap back to reality. Heisheng agrees to free her, but then she just wanders about and looks for things to loot in the storage room. Eventually, she does come to her senses and frees him, so Heisheng begins to loot too. He sneaks to the throne room where that alluring woman was before and finds a secret wall thanks to a button on her throne. On another side of the ship, the prisoner girl from before tries to blend in with the drunken crowd and tries to sneak past them. Too bad this fatso catches her and makes her drink with them. The girl refuses, then she accidentally smashes a bottle, causing the others to peer pressure her into drinking. Soon, a bar fight arises, so the girl tries to book it. Back with Hai Shang, he steals back the golden armor piece and finds a map. While the girl reaches the top side of the boat, she grabs everyone's attention though. <laughs> 
because they begin to swing swords and axes towards her. She gets cornered and is forced to try and jump off. Luckily, here comes Hai Shang swinging along and drags her to the waters. The two then swim to this plot convenient boat they just found, but an arrow suddenly strikes Hai Shang from behind. It's the alluring woman from before, and arguably, the ship captain of this vessel. And that's not just a blade in her hand, but a crossbow as well. She scolds her crew for messing around and she even throws one of them overboard. Fast forward many hours later and our two protagonists are drifting on the seas. Hai Shang wakes up only to find the girl from before treating his arrow wound. At first it stings, but she patches him up. The girl introduces herself as Ansuo Hai Shao. Hai Shang then shows her the golden armor piece and from the looks of it, she says the markings on it makes it look like it was made on her island. She thinks they should team up to find the underwater city together. Since it was Long Ji's will and Hai Shao wanted to go there for her grandparents. Hai Shao then says that they gotta pass the haunted breach first before going into the island that leads into the underwater city. They reach the breach and oh boy, it stretches out for miles on end. It's gravely cold inside since Hai Shao has been inside before, but with the help of this potion that maintains the body temperature, they slowly go inside only to find that it's a graveyard of ships. It is extremely cold to the point that Hei Shang almost faints. Hai Shao gives her half the potion while he finishes it, then they cuddle for warmth. While the boat slowly sweeps across the graveyard of the Titanic, Hai Shao tries keeping Hei Shang awake by telling him the legend of the underwater city, but he succumbs to it. Beyond the breach, Hai Shang remembers meeting the giant sea beast when he was a kid. Then he slowly wakes up Hai Shao, arguing with some old dude. Hai Shang drifts off to sleep again, but he wakes up in the next minute, wrapped in bandages. He checks on his gold armor plate, then he steps outside to see that it's a peaceful place. It's filled with children playing, and one of them even gives him a toy. Then he meets Mr. Wu, the man who changed his bandages while he was dozing off. Apparently, he also gave him some medication to accelerate the healing of his arrow wound. Then Hai Shang finds the prisoner girl. She's got fresh clothes and food for Hai Shang. Then he thanks him for his help. Mr. Wu is a very intelligent scholar, so now it's time to talk about that ancient golden armor plate. Mr. Wu gives Hai Shang a book where different patterns are identified. Once all the bookworming is done, it's time to set some sights. Hai Shao shows Hai Shang and Mr. Wu around the island, where you can see the beaches are protected by the same breach from before. Hai Shao then shows Hai Shang and Mr. Wu a waterfall called the Golden Shard. Then they try to scale a mountain, trying to learn more about the legend of the underwater city. It's a long journey, filled with more climbing, hiking, and walking towards open fields and jungles. Over the course of their journey, they do enjoy their company with each other. Then, they wrap up the day with more boring research and paperwork. On the other side of the seas, the captain from before seems to be on their tail, so she sets her sights on the haunted breach. The crew moves the ship, then the captain starts the ship's flamethrowers. The next day, Mr. Wu, Hai Shao, and Hei Shang do some more research and travel. Then they reach a peak where Hai Shang realizes something with the beautiful view. Apparently, Hai Shang saw that the ship in the Pirate King's diary is actually a land formation, which is found over there. They get to the breach near the landmark, and Hai Shang is confident he found a way in. Hold your breaths because it's time for a really deep dive. Swimming nearly to the sea floor, Hai Shang finds an underwater crevice. So they swim through it, and there's a massive underwater cave. Since it has a large air pocket, they can safely swim to resurface and breathe. It seems like this is a man-made cave, so they begin to walk around and they find some stairs, some rope and some torches. They scale the massive hole slowly. Then Hai Shao drops her torch to see how far down it is. Surprisingly, it's not too far down. They make it to the hole's floor, where they walk deeper and deeper into the inner chambers. Hai Shang begins to see some repressed memories of an armored man and some kid, so Hai Shang goes further than his peers. They do catch up to him, but Mr. Wu hurriedly warns them about a raging current about to send them all into Davy Jones' locker. Realizing it's too late to run, Hai Shang puts himself before Hai Shao and inadvertently blasts an ice beam out of his hand. Looks like the Lin Kwai have found their next Sub-Zero, escaping with their lives intact. The two can't believe what just happened. Then Hai Shang is bewildered by this larger cave. Dr. Wu is already ahead of them and he says he's found a map of sorts, so he invites them to come and see. The map is so complete, both Hai Shang and Dr. Wu claims that his map has the location of the entire ocean. 
Soon, the two have unearthed the location of the underwater city. Haisheo is still freaked out because of Haisheng's ice powers, so now she comes and asks what he really wants with the underwater city. With this in mind, Haisheng has another flashback of the kid and the armored guy, and that might be him and his father. It looks like this isn't his first time here. Flashback over, and Dr. Wu and Hai Sheo deduce that he might be one of those legendary pirates. <laughs> Since he has the tattoo and all, she claims that Hai Sheng lied to her, but he claims that he's just from an ordinary fishing family. Of course, Hai Sheo feels betrayed, but then a large crash shakes the entire crash. Hai Sheo takes this chance to storm out. Then Hai Sheng tries to chase after her. Dr. Wu stops him because there's bigger matters to attend to, like how he suspects that pirates are outside the cave to pillage the land in search of the underwater city. Dr. Wu then realizes that Hai Sheng is the son of the legendary pirate king, Hebo, and that his real name is He Dongcheng. Whichever it is, we're sticking with Hai Sheng. Hai Sheng is in denial, but Dr. Wu says he's the only one who can open the key to the underwater city, so he runs away. Getting to the shore and leaving Dr. Wu underground, Hai Sheng spots the people being taken hostage by the captain and her pirates. He rushes to her, and but it's many versus one. That's until Dr. Wu tells the pirates to stand down and bow. So everyone bows, even the captain. There's Dr. Wu's true colors. He was the one after the underwater city's map all along, but he didn't want any of the villagers to get harmed. Hai Sheo stares grimly at him as Dr. Wu announces that no one will get hurt if they all leave the island peacefully. Being in the middle of all of this chaos, Hai Sheng does doesn't know how to respond. Then he gets attacked by one of the villagers since they think he's a traitor. <laughs> the captain kicks the villager off of him. Then the villagers and pirates are at arms with each other, each one getting ready to kick the butt of the other. Dr. Wu doesn't want this, so since they have the map now, he just wants to leave. He orders his crew to leave and even advises Hai Shang to leave as well since he doesn't belong there. Hai Shang tries to go back to the villagers, but they all refuse. Even having a dramatic scene where this little girl thinks she could deal damage with a bunch of rocks. Then it's revealed that Ann Dale, Hai Sheo's grandfather, got game ended by the pirates. She weeps in sorrow. Then Hai Sheng is branded as a pirate and is asked to leave. Out in the waters, Hai Sheng has no choice but to come to the pirate's side, where everyone else greets him with respect. The captain then introduces him to Dr. Wu once more, and he says that the golden armor he found isn't ordinary. In fact, it's his father's. Dr. Wu asks Hai Sheng to help him find his father, then he wonders how his father bit the dust. The big reveal is that Dr. Wu and the rest of the crew were responsible for that because he felt like Hebo betrayed his crew and the rule of the pirates. They were on the cusp of finding the underwater city, but he refused to give the location. Dr. Wu goes on his stereotypical villainous rant about how they need the power of the underwater city so that they could protect themselves. He verbally forces Hai Shang to accept his pirate heritage, and that's when Hai Shang has a flashback of how he's been holding the mark of a pirate on his arm all this time. Hai Shang feels like he's never had control of his life thanks to his orphaned origins, and now he knows that Dr. Wu and his crew game ended his father. He begins to angrily face his burdens, specifically with a wimpy war cry that actually has enough power to break the aquarium behind him. The captain was about to forcibly restrain him, but Dr. Wu holds her back, and he's stunned by his anime protagonist powers. He says as long as he stands as the Pirate King's son, he will be the new Pirate King, and the underwater city is theirs for the taking. Set a course for the underwater city. Back on the island, a massive funeral is held on the beach, where Hai Sheo and many others grieve for the loss of Andeo's life. He passed, defending the island, so Hai Sheo travels to Hai Shang's hometown, where it's revealed that Long Zhi is alive and well. Hai Sheo gives a rousing speech to try and convince Long Zhi and his treasure hunters to go after Hai Shang and his pirates to try and stop them from reaching the underwater city. Of course, everyone else is against this idea since it's far too dangerous, but Long Zhi responds. He says that Hai Shang has always regarded this place as his home, so he's gonna bring back Hai Shang, game ended or not. 
in the pirate ship, Hai Shang has crossed over to the dark side. He now dons the pirate's armor and leads them to the underwater city. He opens the whirlpool to the underwater city and the pirates cheer. That's until an unknown boat is seen following them. Looks like bootleg Godzilla is also following close below. The unknown boat gets close, but the pirates don't worry because it's just a fishing boat. Lesson 1. Never underestimate your opponent. Just as I was saying that, the pirates get boarded. It's the treasure hunters. A fight breaks out, but Hai Shang stops the captain from game ending any of them. The treasure hunters regret leaving Hai Shang that day, but the captain says that they won't see the end of this day. Until, of course, this massive fleet approaches the pirate ship. Hai Shao then boards the ship and pleads with Hai Shang to go home with them. Hai Shang, on the other hand, has his destiny to manifest, so he leaves her to read. That's when Hai Shao reveals that Hebo betrayed the pirates in order to protect the world from the power of the underwater city. Hai Shang doesn't take any of this because he still thinks Long Ji is a lizard chow, but enters Long Ji. Hai Shang reunites with the father that actually raised him. <laughs> But then, he's struck by something. The same gun that ended Hebo has ended Long Ji. With this rage, the battle finally begins while Dr. Wu gets in gear for the underwater city. Hai Shang now remembers everything that happened to Hebo, his dad, and as a kid, he dived after him when he fell to the seas. A clash of muscles and swords still rage on. But then, the ship begins to sink into the whirlpool. Hai Shang then protects Hai Shao from the captain, but his powers don't come out. Godzilla to the rescue as he chimps on the delicious captain. Hai Shang then decides to go after Dr. Wu in the underwater city so that he could stop this madness once and for all. The whirlpool wasn't just a water vortex, but a dimensional one as well, because it sends Hai Shang to a secret land. Welcome to the underwater city. Hai Shang then catches up to Dr. Wu, who's trying to harness all of Underwater City's powers from a golden pool. The two meet, and predictable dialogue occurs. <laughs> Wu wants to fuel his power-hungry desires, while Hai Shang wants it so he could protect the world. Get ready, because it's final boss time. Dr. Wu starts the battle by sweeping cold ice across the land and air. He freezes mostly everything to a grinding halt. Hai Shang is left weak by this cold climate, but he soon walks slowly towards the pillar to try and break the power of it. He gets blasted by Wu. Then the golden armor melts in his hand. Soon he absorbs the gold fluid in his hand, so it's time for round two. Hai Shang breaks the ice and the gold begins to reject Wu. With one last falcon punch, the ice all around crumbles and it swats Dr. Wu like a fly. Because of this, the haunted breach from the island falls. The pirate ship resurfaces with most of the treasure hunters intact. All of them grieve the loss of Hai Shang. But he's right here, guys. Hai Shang and Hai Shao end this adventure with a glorious ride from that bootleg Godzilla. And that's the wet and wild adventure of the Forbidden Depths. What was your treasured moment in this film? Let us know at the comments below using hashtag cinema recap. And we'll see you in the next deep dive.